week we're going to learn to make the cowl that I'm wearing right now. It's called Color My Cowl. And if you saw the video that I released last week, last week I released a free blank coloring page where you could fill in the, your own colors for the cowl that you want to knit. This is a good introduction to Fair Isle knitting if you've never done Fair Isle before. If you have, I think you'll find that it's not a very difficult Fair Isle to pattern to work. Uh, all the yarn amounts um, for what you're, you'll need, uh, suggestions for yarns to use, and a, the download link to the free pattern. I'm trying to think of everything that's there. It's all on my website. If you click the little I in the upper right hand corner, you can also get um, the coloring page if you haven't uh, colored your own yet, where it'll help you experiment with different colors and decide what you want to do. I have some samples here of, of different colors that I want to show you, just how different this pattern looks in different colors. This video is sponsored by Knitter's Pride because I am using their uh, Platina, their Nova Platina 16 inch circular needles. And this is from an interchangeable set. And this is my own personal set. And you'll see that there are some needles missing from my personal set because I am using them all in samples for this video. These are really the ideal needles for this. 16-inch um, circulars are unique in that the needles are shorter to accommodate the shorter cord. And when you're working Fair Isle or anytime you're working something where you could have tension issues like, like cables or Fair Isle or any kind of stranded work, not using double-pointed needles, not using magic loop, but a um, a, a smaller circular needle is the way to go if you want to avoid uh, tension issues, if you want to minimize the chances of tension issues. So these are really the perfect needle. There are links to where you can find these needles um, close to wherever you are. I'll give that in the video description field below and also on my website. And in the next segment, I'm going to give you a close-up of how these needles work because you have all the different needle sizes and you can just um, attach the cord as needed and it all goes into your awesome little Knitter's Pride case which they always give us for the interchangeable sets. Okay, so um, in the next segment we're going to talk about the cast on and getting started with Fair Isle. I'm going to show you some samples of how this pattern looks. Be sure to get your free copy of the pattern and your free coloring page and we'll get started in the next segment. I have so much to show you. I have so much piled around me right now. If you did not get your coloring page yet, the, the artist who designed this, her name is Paula Pertilli, and I will give you a link to her Etsy store in the video description field and on my website. She has an Etsy store called Drawings of Knitting, and she has a bunch of knitting designs that you can, you can buy the individual pages, download them and print them and color them as many times as you want. And I'll be giving you a close-up of this, but I will give you a link to the Color My Cowl coloring page video, and you can watch that and then there are a bunch of different, um, I show samples of a bunch of different coloring pages my friends did. And when you finish your coloring page, be sure to take a picture of it, hashtag color my cowl. We can all take a look at what everyone else is doing. Um, or get ideas for different things based on what other people are doing. Because I know that there are some really creative people out there who are going to take my simple Fair Isle design and go nuts with it. And I can't wait to see how it looks. <laughs> because I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I have kind of a, a one way of thinking about how to do this, and I know other people don't have that. Anyway, I want to give you um, first up a close up of these Nova Platina 16 inch circular needles and how they work, and then we'll get into the Fair Isle part of this. So let's go ahead and take a look. These are the needles that I'm about to start using. You can see these are, the platinas are chrome plated. They're very shiny. The size in the US size and the millimeter size are etched into the side here. They have a long taper and a nice sharp point. And the question that I get a lot from people is, is it a really sharp point? Because some needles have really, really sharp point, different brands. And no, it is not as sharp as, as like the sharpest needles that other brands offer. It's not so sharp that you're going to risk splitting stitches, which I think is great. These are some of my go-to all-purpose needles, and the long taper makes it easy to work more complicated stitches, and the sharp point too, but they're not so sharp that they can only be used for lace. Um, to work these, you take the little key and you take the cord and 
Let me start from here. You take the needle size that you need and then just attach it to the cord and this key gives you something to hang on to so you can hand tighten it the rest of the way. And then when you're finished, you just unscrew it like I did and put it back in its case and you always, you always know you have the needle size you need. You always know it's there and, and when, you're, when you're buying yarn. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are seven different sizes. And I'll give you details about where to find these and um, the different sizes uh, everything else in the video description field and on my website. These are great needles. I don't ever recommend anything that I don't actually use myself, so you can trust me on this. So we, um, well, I want to show you some things first that's very fun. Here is the coloring page, blank, and here is the coloring page for the cowl that I was wearing in the first segment. And what I want to show you is how this, how this translates from coloring page to knitting pattern to, yeah, knitting pattern. So you can see here, <laughs> it does look just the same. So when you're designing yours, you can be sure it's, it really is going to look like what you've colored. And I'm actually going to use this as my pattern as we move forward today. So this one is my pastel colored one. I'm going to actually set it down here. Here is another one that I worked up in three colors with a dark background. This is the background color plus light blue plus white. You can see this looks really different. It changes personality so much when you change the colors. Here's another that I did in kind of sock monkey colors. Three colors, red, gray, and white. And I'm covering up part of this with my hand because I was still designing the pattern when I knit this one. And this is not part of the pattern. I changed things up. This is all part of the pattern that I ended up going with. And then this last one here is black, gray, and white. It's actually upside down. Black, gray, and white. Totally different look from the pastel colored one and even the blue one. I love it. Okay, the first thing we're going to get started with is a provisional cast on. And we're going to use, we're going to put the provisional cast on right on the needle, which is something that I, I have tutorials showing it both ways, and I think people really prefer it this way, so this is how I'm going to do it. Start by tying a knot in the yarn. That's just to mark the slip knot end. We're going to make a slip knot and take a crochet hook, and all the materials you need, of course, are listed out on my website. You want to chain a few stitches just to get you going. And now we're going to do a provisional cast on right onto the needle. And the point of the provisional cast on is it's a cast on that can be removed later to reveal live stitches and we're going to want that. So I want um, to hold everything like this with the yarn under the knitting needle. Reach over the knitting needle with the crochet hook and grab the yarn and pull it through. That's one stitch cast on. Take the working yarn and pull it behind the needle. The, work, the crochet hook over the knitting needle, grab the yarn and pull it through. That's two. Pull the working yarn behind the needle. This is what you're going to do. I believe the cast on number is 84. This, the alternative to doing it this way is to pick up stitches from the spine of the crochet chain. And like I said, I have a lot of tutorials where we do it that way, but I find that people prefer this one to picking up stitches. Anyway, when you cast on, when you get the, the total number, which I believe is 84, you will then just chain a few. Break the yarn and pull the end through the last loop. Now obviously that's not 84, but I do happen to have cast on finished here. And remember I have a knot in one end because that marks the slip knot end. 
And that's something I always do because when it comes to unzipping, you want to make sure you know which is which. I need a stitch marker. You know, I had a stitch marker and now I'm wondering where it went. I don't see it in front of me. Okay. So the first thing I want to do here to get started, my the, this is actual this is not the real yarn that I'm going to be using for the first color. I actually want to use yarn in a different color from the yarn that, the background color that I'm using in my um, in my Fair Isle chart. You see how I've colored this in in light blue? That's because I, my provisional cast on is light blue. And then the next round I'm getting started with is the ivory color. So let me get this right here. Knit the first round from the slip knot end. Okay. So starting with that, that's some, a note that I wrote to myself to make sure I wouldn't get this, <laughs> wouldn't mess this up. So I have the slip knot end here because there's a knot. I'm going to start knitting these stitches with this yarn, with the main color, background color of yarn in my Fair Isle pattern. And the thing that's unique about this is um, we haven't joined in the round yet. That's why this is notable. I'm just going to knit around all these stitches. I'm afraid you're going to have to be patient with me for a moment while I do this. I'll speed up. So I want to get around all these stitches so I can actually show you how to use your coloring page as a pattern because it does contain everything we need to knit the Fair Isle design. And I know somebody is going to ask about the way that I knit. It's called flicking. And I'll give you a link here to my video on flicking. It's a way of holding the yarn in your right hand without letting go of the right hand needle when you wrap the stitch. I'm just making conversation right now <laughs> while you wait for me to get through this round. <laughs> Because the next round we're going to, a lot of things happen the next round. We're going to join in the round and start working Fair Isle. And it's a good idea to keep a row counter. So you always know exactly where you are in the Fair Isle pattern. Because it's only knit stitches, but you want to know where the different colors come in. Okay, now I'm ready to join in the round. I want to make sure that nothing is twisted. All of my knots are on the inside of the work. I'm going to place a marker and jump over here to my Fair Isle chart. So the numbers are over here on the right hand side. That was row one that I just did. Round two is knit two cream color, knit one pink. So I'm going to go ahead and join in the round by knitting two cream color. Let me get that out of the way. And I can pull on some things to tighten them up. And the next thing I want to do is to knit the pink color. I want to show you how to do this. I'm going to put my needle in. This is how I'm going to attach a new color. I'm going to put my needle in like I'm ready to knit the next stitch, grab the new color, and leaving about a six inch tail, fold it over and flop it over the back needle and pull that through. So my pattern as I read across is pink, ivory, ivory, pink, ivory, ivory, pink, ivory, ivory, all the way around. 
So pink, ivory, ivory, pink, ivory, ivory. There's so many things I'm going to show you here in a minute. Just bear with me. I want to get this going a little bit so you can see how the pattern goes. Okay. And the first thing I want to show you is how I'm keeping both strands of yarn going at once. And what I like to do is um, have the two strands kind of sticking out like this, put two, put two fingers between the two colors, and then when I need a pink one, I, have, I just pull my, my first finger forward and I have pink. And then when I need an ivory one, I pull my first finger back and I have ivory. So forward, pink, back, ivory. Forward, pink. Let me, I'll show you that again slowly. The yarn's like this, coming off out of the work. I put my two first fingers in there like this. And then I have, I have different um, ways that I do it. This is how I'm doing it on this pattern because they're short floats. So I need to make a pink stitch. So I'm going to pull my first finger forward and look at that, I have the pink yarn. Okay, now I need the ivory yarn, pull my first finger back and I have the ivory yarn. Forward, pink yarn, back, ivory yarn. Okay, now that is the first thing that I, um, I wanna show you. The next one is how we're going to keep good tension because we're not alternating every other stitch. We have two stitches, two ivory stitches and a pink and this float on the back of the work, we want to make sure to keep that nice and loose because if it's tight, it's going to cram these two ivory stitches together and the tension won't look right. So I'm ready to work a pink stitch. I put my needle in. I'm going to slide all the stitches on the right needle kind of far apart to make it a longer distance for this pink yarn to travel, to wrap the needle. And when I did that, I gave it a nice, long, loose float. And I've specifically designed this pattern with really short floats so that it's not difficult to, um, you don't have to do any wrapping in the back of the work or anything. So I'm ready to work a pink stitch, slide the stitches on the right-hand needle so there's space between them, and then wrap the stitch. And you don't really have to stretch the stitches apart when you're only skipping one stitch, but because we're skipping two here, I want to make sure there's good tension. I'm going to cover all of the basics of Fair Isle right here in this row. Because the last thing I want to say to you is um, I want to talk about Fair Isle dominant colors. I didn't believe in this until I worked on a project where I didn't pay attention to the dominant color and it became really obvious. Because my background color is this ivory color, I'm going to make this the non-dominant color. And because this is the contrasting color, I want this to be the dominant color. So to make that happen, I'm just always going to make sure the pink yarn or whatever color is not ivory is on top and the ivory yarn is on bottom. So that every time I go to work an ivory stitch, it will always be pulled from underneath the contrasting color. And every time I go to work the contrasting color, it's always over the ivory yarn. You see that? Ivory yarn under, pink yarn over. Okay, I want to talk about, um, whoops, I just messed up the pattern. I want to talk a little bit about uh, different ways of holding the yarn because I don't always hold Fair Isle projects this way, but it's a way I, I definitely like to hold this one. If you are comfortable with holding um, a yarn in each hand, that's another good way to go. If you are a thrower who's uh, more comfortable with just dropping the yarn each time and picking up the color you need, that is a fine way to go. I've knit projects myself that way. If you're a continental knitter who wants to hold both yarns in, in this hand and just pull forward with whichever one you need. Just be careful to leave the dominant color on top and the other color below it. 
really anything you can, any way you can get that, that stitch wrapped, this is a good project for practicing on different ways of, of working Fair Isle to find what's good for you. You can see with all those samples I knit, I am definitely in a swing for how to work this pattern. Okay, so that's my, that's how to work Fair Isle. That's the basic techniques of Fair Isle for any Fair Isle project you're working on. So when I get back to the stitch marker, I will have finished round two, and round three is actually exactly the same as round two, the way that I have it colored here. Ivory, ivory, pink, ivory, ivory, pink. And then round four is ivory, pink, ivory, pink, ivory, 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 pink, ivory, pink. Ivory, ivory, ivory. You can get a little tune going in your head so you can <laughs> remember how it goes. But really, you're going to be able to look back on your work and see. See, uh, once you work through it a couple times, you'll be able to see what the next stitch should be as you're working through it. So um, I can tell you as you're working through, you're just going to carry the colors up the back of the work, and I can show you what I mean by that. Every now and then, you're going to want to break the yarn because there's going to be a big gap where you're not going to use that color. You can just break the yarn, but you can see here how I have the colors carried through some of it. Like through th this yellow here, I'm going to have an ivory and pink row and then an ivory and yellow. I'm not going to break the pink yarn. I'm just going to carry it in the back of the work. But when I finish with this last yellow round here, I'm going to break that yarn because I'm not using yellow again all the way to here. That's too far to carry the yarn. There's just no need to. And because this cowl is turned inside out, you don't even have to weave in these ends. I didn't weave in the ends in any of the ones that I knit. I just let them hang out on the <laughs> inside of the cowl because no one's ever going to see them. You just have to be sure not to tell anyone. I just told you a big secret. Anyway, once you knit the entire length of the cowl, the pattern gives you directions for how long to make it, or you can ma make it as long or as short as you like, as long as it will fit over your head. The next thing we're going to do is to unzip the provisional cast on and do the Kitchener stitch to um, attach the two ends together. Once you finish knitting your cowl as long as the pattern tells you to do or as long as you'd like, it's time to seam the two ends together. And I want to mention that you don't have to make this into a cowl. If you want to make this into a scarf, you can just seam the ends or use Kitchener stitch on the two ends separately and not actually join them into a cowl. Uh, you know, I was thinking that this Fair Isle design is actually really masculine looking and it would make a good men's scarf if I just wanted to well, I'd have to make it longer than this. <laughs> but I'd make a good men's scarf if I just wanted to um, just seam the ends together. And the Kitchener stitch technique is the same either way you do it. So I'm going to show you how to, um, how to work the Kitchener stitch uh, if you want to join this in the round to make a cowl. Uh, let's get right to it. Okay, this is our goal. This is the last row that I worked. And um, is still on the needles. I want to leave it on the needles. I'm actually going to, I'm just one stitch shy of the stitch marker, so I'm going to knit one more stitch and take out my stitch marker. Now it's ready to go. And my goal is to get all of the stitches from the provisional cast on end onto three DPNs. You can use double pointed needles or a circular needle. What I wanted to do was show you on double pointed needles because I figure that most people aren't going to have. 16 inch circular needles, two sets in the same size. So I thought I'd give you the option of using double pointed needles. And double pointed needles are, are perfectly fine to use. We'll get back to this in a minute. Because for now, we're going to use this black and white piece. And we, I'm going to show you how to unzip the provisional cast on. If you've done this in the past for you know, toe up socks and things like that, it's exactly the same. I want to start with the non-slip knot end. Remember, I tied a knot in the slip knot end. I want to start with the scrap yarn in the non-slip knot end and pull that tail end through the loop just backwards of the way that I fastened it off. And this yarn is, is, is waste yarn, so if you split the stitches like I did, no big deal. Okay. 
So I've unzipped those three stitches that I did um, leading up to the actual cast on. And the first stitch is always wonky. I'm going, it, the yarn actually runs through it. So I'm going to put my needle into that stitch and pull the yarn out of it. Okay, now we get started with the real thing. I have some nice contrast going here. It's also really brightly lit in here so I can see. The waist yarn is in white and my stitches are in black. And my stitches are black V's like this. I want to put my needle under the right leg of each V. So right below the waist yarn, under the right leg, under the right leg. I usually like to do several at a time before I start unzipping because it's really fun. And ta-da! Stitches on my needle. It looks like I split one. Don't panic. I fixed it. <laughs> Don't panic. I could have just fixed it when I came to it, but I wanted to fix it. I knew it would be okay. So again, I'm going to start with putting my needle under the right leg. And then I can just pull on this and unzip it. I have a little snag and it pulled right out. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then once um, I have all of the stitches, I can just throw this waste yarn away. I don't need it anymore. Um, it did its job. I'm just going to set this aside and go back to this piece where I already have it on double pointed needles. And this part's pretty fun. I think it's pretty fun. Um, I am, uh, I know you can't see the entire length of this, but I have my first stitch here. And if I follow it down, I have a matching gap between two needles here. So I know that this is my first stitch on this side, and this is my first stitch on this side. So when I match them up, Actually, I want to. I, I want you guys to be able to see this, so I'm going to match them up like this. It is pretty clear at how they match up, and the way you want to match them up. Whoops, let me think for a minute. Um, I want to match them up like this. I'm glad that happened because I would have forgotten to mention this to you. You want the right side of the work to face you and the way that I had it before was the wrong side. That's why it didn't seem right. So I am matching it up so that um, the right side of the work is definitely out and facing me. I'm looking at that as I look at the live stitches. I'm going to Kitchener Stitch. Okay, and I left kind of a long tail on the last row that I knit. If I run out, I can always attach more yarn. It's no problem. Kitchener stitch is pretty fun, I think. And it's worked in groups of four stitches. You want to line the two needles up like this. This is the cast on to the bind off. Um, the two setup, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking and talking at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. The two setup stitches I want to do is on the front needle, I want to go in as if to purl, and on the back needle, I want to go in as if to knit. And just leave everything there, and now we're ready to start with the real Kitchener stitch. So this is what it's like. On the front needle, it's knit, take that stitch off, purl, then we jump to the back needle, purl, slide that stitch off, knit. So in my head, I say knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit, knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. This is what it looks like. I go in as if to knit, take that stitch off, and then go in as if to purl, go in as if to purl, off, Go in as if to knit. 
That's the sequence. Even though you had to watch my yarn get caught on everything on the way there, that's the sequence. Knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. You can give it a little tug. Knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. Okay, now you can see I have a nice seam going here. I can actually pull it quite hard and scrunch it up and then pull it back apart again. And the thing that is so awesome about Kitchener Stitch in, in an instance like this is that everything is going to line up beautifully and there is going to be no visible seam. Um, it just, it looks great. So you uh, keep doing that all the way around. You can pull it really tight and then straighten it back out. Uh, I, used, I like to do that a few times as I go around. And then when you get to the last two stitches, you won't be able to knit off purl, purl off knit. You will just knit off, purl off. So front needle knit off, purl off. And then just tighten it up and thread your end back into the cowl Pull it out another side, cut it, let the ends, you don't have to weave any ends in is my point. You can just hide them on the inside of the cowl and they'll, no one will ever be the wiser. I won't tell anybody. Well, there you have it. Uh, we've covered all of the basic Fair Isle techniques as well as techniques unique to this cowl since it is a cowl and it's joined in the round. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with with different colors. Be sure to post your coloring page and even your cowl to Instagram and Facebook, hashtag ColorMyCowl. Good luck.